All right. Hello, hello, hello. It's your boy. I'm back. Um, so today on the agenda, I've got a little climate change simulation going on in Brazil. There's a they found two albino echidnas in Australia, and then I'm just gonna finish it off with some uh, discovered animals in uh, Asia. So first and foremost, hope you guys are having a great day. Like, comment, subscribe, what you guys think, and uh, I'll get right into it. So the Brazil climate change simulation. So essentially what they're doing, they called it the Amazon face because it's in the rainforest of the Amazon and face stands for free air CO2 enrichment, which is just a funny way of saying we're going to bomb it with CO2 to see how future climate change will affect the Amazon, which is pretty cool. Um, the project consists of building 96 to 12, <laughs> 12 story high aluminum towers that will essentially just spray CO2 in its uh, general area. Uh, it's con it's considered uh, a bunch of rings. They're gonna put a bunch of rings and each ring is going to have 16, I believe, 16 towers in it. And then they're just kinda, they're starting from the outside going inwards. So each of these rings will bomb the area with CO2. So they're trying to make a microclimate to see what future levels of carbon dioxide concentrations would have as an impact on the Amazon because there's a lot of talk about you know climate change <laughs> how bad it is some people don't believe it at all some people are saying we're gonna die in the next 10 years from it so there's a lot of stipulation about it so this is I think this is a good little study to really just kind of limit test you know they're limit testing how much the Amazon can sequester carbon dioxide which is I think it's a good study uh, people talk about it, the Amazon potentially turning into a savanna in the future, like just kind of just not being able to take carbon anymore and just deserting out, which is, I guess it's a possibility. But the, uh, the test, the test is about 70 kilometers north of Manaus, Manus. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but that's okay. Uh, it's led by the National Institute for Amazon Research, which is probably a British federal institution, but it is federal. Uh, the British government pledged 9 million to the project. And it should be fully operation mid-2024. Currently, they say there's about two rings that'll be done by August 2023, which is this year. So a couple months out, they'll be 33% done, essentially. So yeah, next year, it should be done. Um, they had an atmospheric chemist that praised their project and said they should do it in four different quadrants of the Amazon because the Amazon carbon absorption capacity varies a lot from area to area so making the test more unanimous across the board for different areas to make sure that they got a real good test in and the nature journal which is just some you know nature i think we, i used to see it in the uh the school when i was a kid in the school library they had like journals and i'd see nature journal all the time and i thought it was always the funnest one because it just had some cool things in it but they they really they 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 released a study in it that said the eastern Amazon had stopped functioning as a carbon sink, so it's already apparently it's already deteriorating in terms of being useful for climate change, which is not the best ideal point. But uh, overall, yeah, the the point is just to see like what is the tipping point of the Amazon, and how much can we abuse it with climate change? So I think a nice little test like this. It go a pretty long way. I think it can have some good, some good usage. Moving on, we've got the albino echidnas. Also, uh, they named them Raffi and Mr. Spike. Cute names, whatever. Don't really. What are, what are you supposed to name an echidna? I guess so. They're but first of all, they say that echidnas are rare to see in general. They're not that common because they're very shy and they hide a lot, so you don't see them all as much. But they saw two albino ones within the span of two weeks in New South Wales, Australia. So that's a state or province or whatnot. I'll put a picture, obviously, for you guys. Um, echidnas, which is also another fun kind of thing. Echidnas are one of two animals who lay eggs, produce milk for their babies. So they kind of do both. Their babies are called puggles. And I thought that was fucking adorable. And uh, the other animal that does this is platypuses. Um... I don't know why. I feel like platypuses are a pretty universally liked species. They're weird. They got venom. They got a duck beak. They, they're shaped chubby. You know what I mean? There's a pair of platypus from Phineas and Ferb. You know, you've got some good 
platypus vibes out there. So knowing that echidnas and platypuses are in their own little boat as well is pretty fun. And uh, I wrote down a little fun echidna fact, just for, for people that don't know. Uh, to protect against the heat, they blow snot bubbles around their nose to keep their nose wet, which is a little gross. And they uh, they have four-headed penises that can ejaculate ten times in a row with, like, hardly any break. Now, I know a lot of men that would drool to get some, their hands on something like that. You know what I'm saying? They, they would want that for themselves. All right, so, um, so in... 2021 and 2022, there were about 380 discovered animals across of Asia, 290 being plants, 19 being fish, 24 amphibians, 46 reptiles, and a uh, mammal. I'm just going to talk about a couple, like two or three of them, because I'm not going to go through a whole list of a bunch of discovered plants and stuff. It's just, it'd be a lot longer than I think what most people are willing to listen to, right? And uh, so the first thing is a color-changing lizard, also known as the Calotes goetzi. Don't know if I pronounced that right. Don't care. Continuing on. It apparently changes colors with its age and how it's feeling and things like that. I've got a bearded dragon that gets darker when it's colder or darker when it's pissed, um, lighter when it's very warm. So uh, it's not uncommon. you got chameleons out there. So lizards typically have that color-changing attribute. But I believe these guys climb trees and stuff and all that good stuff. But... I put a picture on there for you guys. Another thing, the Dendrobium fusifosium. Fossium? Doesn't matter. It's basically a mini orchid that resembles one of the Muppets. And I'll put a picture of the Muppet that they're referring to. But apparently it's the one that sings like na na ma na 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 or something. Na 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 na. Something with a na. Because that's how I found it. I, I googled Muppet and I put like na five times in a row and it came up. It's one of the songs there. But I don't know what off the top of my head. Uh, another thing that was cool is the uh, mammal that they found. They called it the Myotis hyesi. So it's apparently a type of bat. They only found the bones though. So it wasn't, or at least I couldn't find pictures of it or any semblance of life from it. But it seems to be a type of bat that they found. Or the remnants of. So I'm not 100% sure if uh, if, there, if it's even alive. It could already be extinct honestly. It could have been the last one. But they did state... That a lot of the new finds and the new animals that they discovered are already like mostly all endangered, like endangered of being extinct or just in low quantities, which I guess kind of makes sense because if they weren't found yet, there's probably less of it. And if there's less of it, then it's endangered, right? So anyways, that was that was all I had for you guys today. And I uh, hope you guys have a good one and I'll, I'll catch you in the next time. Toodles. <laughs>